I thought you might be interested in seeing what bulbs I'm ordering. Um, I've already got my order in for tulips, for alliums, for uh, daffodils. I haven't put in my orders yet for uh, dahlias for next year because I'm, I'm actually kind of debating about what I want to do with dahlias. I'm having a lot of trouble this year, as I've mentioned so many times, with, with moles and voles. Um, and so dahlias are not cheap. And um, I have not had great luck saving dahlias from year to year. I don't have a problem buying them, but I do have a problem with them not coming up. And so far they seem to be struggling. Um, I've had to make wire cages for them this year. But anyway, so I thought I'd show you what my bulb order looks like for um, the 2022-2023 spring season. Again, tulips. Uh, I get most of my tulips, most all of them from Color Blends, which is right here in Connecticut, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I've actually been down there to do some photography. It's such a lovely place. Um, they have great quality bulbs. I also have gotten some from Longfield Gardens. Uh, so uh, let's uh, get into uh, spring planting. It's not too early to think about. Oh, well, not spring planting, spring, spring blooming, fall planting. Um, tulips have to be planted in the fall. They need that cold period. Um, so it's not too early to start thinking about what's gonna come up in the spring. And um, let's, uh, let's talk tulips. So first I'm gonna talk about alliums and then tulips and then uh, daffodils uh, for the most part. So if you follow me at all, you know I'm in love with Allium Globemaster. It's my favorite. Um, this is the largest of all the alliums and it has beautiful flower heads that are even remain attractive when it's finished. Um, the they grow like three feet tall. They bloom very late, which is good. They're deer resistant, but not bowl and gopher resistant. They might eat the, the bulbs. Um, they make a great cut flower, fresh flower. Um, again, beautiful violet purple globes, um, very sturdy stems, which is great. Now at the end of the season, um, they do, as soon as the um, alliums um, begin to, um, the, the leaves start yellowing when the flowers open. This is very, very normal. And I get around that by planting it around, um, uh, with a lot of, uh, catmint, nepeta, um, and salvias around the base. So it h helps to hide some of that, you know, foliage, just like when tulip foliage dies or, or, or daffodil foliage dies. It's nice to have other stuff around there. So again, these bloom very late. And they're really, they're beautiful all spring. They're absolutely my favorite. Next up we have Allium Gladiator. These are a little bit smaller than the Globemaster. So the Globemaster has a really big head around eight inches. These are about six inch flower heads. So it's a little bit smaller, but they bloom a hair earlier and they stand a little taller, like 42 to 46 inches tall. Um, and their foliage is a little longer lasting. It's a great way to bridge. Alliums are such a great way to bridge the gap between spring, uh, late spring bulbs and early summer perennials. Um, so again, this is Gladiator with that really pretty uh, lilac pink uh, head. So Gladiator actually blooms just before Mount Everest, this one, which is a snowy white, like softball size head. Um, nice straight stems um, is a good balance um, between, you know, the late spring bulbs again and the early summer perennials. It makes a great cut flower. It's like four feet tall. It blooms very late. All these alliums are zoned 4A to 7B. So they're very, very versatile and they work in a lot of climates. Um, they're definitely fall planted, just like all these things we're talking about today are. So this is Allium Mount Everest. Um, again, makes a really nice cut flower. Very pretty and it looks great if you can put it against some uh, darker background items. 
Next up, let's talk about uh, Pinball Wizards. So this is actually a new one for me and it's very similar to Globemaster, so I won't put them next to one another. Um, but they, the uh, stems are a little shorter and stockier. Um, the florets are slightly larger and they also have a really pretty, beautiful silvery sheen. Um, and they look really attractive long after the flowers fade. This is also a late spring uh, bloom a little less than three feet tall. Another new one for me this year, and I saw it somewhere last year, and I just oh fell in love with it, um, is Shiberti. Um, and this has like a spidery rose purple flower um, with star-shaped florets on each of the stalks, and the stalks are all une uneven lengths. Um, it's a late spring bloomer, like two feet tall, 12, 18 to 24 inches tall. Um, again, so late, very late. Um, the great thing about alliums is they're so architectural. Um, they just provide a, 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 a different look coming up through different, um, early spring perennials. Um, it's just a great way to add some extra really pizzazz interest to your garden. So this is Allium Schuberti with its spidery rose colored heads. And last but not least, what else I'm ordering this year is Allium bulgaricum is how I know it. I've seen it as siculum, but that's, um, I think it's, the name is ne Nectar Scordum Siculum vari Variety Bulgaricum. So there's a mouthful for you. Um, I, I've already planted this, um, so I'm adding to it. I have some others that I'm not buying more of, uh, like Ostara, uh, drumstick alliums. I have a bunch of other ones that I don't need any more of. Some I had a hundred last year. So this one has beautiful sprays of that creamy, um, the, the cream and the burgundy and the green on the, these bells that, that hang downwards. It's so pretty. Um, and then when the seed pods, um, when the flowers fade, the seed pods kind of face upwards, which is kind of different and cool. Again, it blooms late spring, uh, 28 to 32 inches tall, long-lasting cut flowers. The deer won't eat them. They do all need lots of sun and good drainage. Um, and the nice thing about all the alliums is remember the, they're in the onion family. So they do help uh, resist deer and rabbits. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Makes a really good cut flower and dried flower. So on to the tulips, and I think I'm going to do them in alphabetical order because otherwise I think it'll be kind of confusing. And then um, at the end of the video, uh, underneath, um, I will put down where I buy my tulips from. Like I said, mostly, uh, most of them are from color blends, but um, I do get some from some other places. So this is Everon, um, 18 to 20 inches high, uh, this rose color. It's a double, which is really pretty. Um, not too shocking a pink, um, but it has, um, it kind of fades to white at the petal edges, which is really beautiful. Um, it's a late tulip, again, rose, zones 3A to 8B. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. So actually this year, I'm actually planting a few new varieties that I haven't planted in the past, thanks to some things I've seen Klaus Dalby po uh, posting on his, because he is definitely the king of tulips. So this is Akibono, 18 to 20 inches high, um, mid to late uh, spring, really pretty pale yellow coloring with red and green um, touches on it, um, really Lovely. I think this is just going to shimmer in the sun, that pale yellow, again, with the red and the green. Um, so this is Akibono. Next up is Angelique. This is so beautiful, this soft pink and white. Um, it's a late flowering double, um, and it gets 15 to 17 inches. I'm really looking forward to this. I love, I think if you follow me, you know I love the pinks and the purples. Um, all tulips need well-drained soil, and again, zones 3A to 8B, um, they really need that cold, uh, dry period to flower. 
So this is called Balance of Colors, and it's one of two blend groups that I'm getting this year. This is a variable coloration, creamy white and soft pink, um, very fragrant, beautiful for soft colored spring arrangements, 16 to 18 inches tall, and blooms mid-spring. So this is Balance of Colors. And I think this will go really beautiful with like a kibono. So this year I'm actually adding a few more of the really dark ones. I always use Queen of Night, but this year I'm trying uh, Black Hero and Black Parrot that I'll show you next. So Black Hero is a fully double sport of Queen of Night with really large, glossy, almost back black, you know, like reddish black sepals. Um, 16 to 20 inches tall, blooms late spring. So this is Black Parrot, um, and it's got very dark burgundy, almost black, like flames kind of thing. Um, great for adding to a sunny border. 16 to 18 inches, again, blooms mid to late spring. Uh, black Parrot. I've seen Klaus Dalby use these, um, and it just, they're just magnificent with other, with other um, tulips and other combinations. Last year, I planted Blushing Lady for the first time. Oh my God, absolutely love this. Um, it's yellow with the rose. Um, the roses on the exterior, you can see one of my pictures here from when it was blooming. Um, it looks very different, open and closed. Um, just beautiful, 26 to 30 inches, mid to late spring. Love it, love it, love it, buying more this year. Um, and I should say, I pull my uh, tulips. I, I use them as annuals. Um, my beds have irrigation, um, and the bulbs would just be too wet during the rest of the year, and they'd end up rotting, or the voles would end up eating them. So next, Candy Prince, beautiful lavender pink tulip. Um, great for early to mid spring garden. It's nice to vary um, the tulips you're getting as far as bloom time. That way you have stuff from the beginning of spring all the way to late spring when the alliums and the, some, uh, the spring perennials start taking over. So Candy Prince is 12 to 14 inches tall. Again, zones three through eight, early to mid spring. Candy Prince. Copper Image, uh, this is a beautiful mix of like salmon, apricot, raspberry, green. Um, so this should be a really pretty addition um, with some of the uh, early spring perennials. 16 to 20 inches tall, mid to late spring. Um, so a nice mid spring uh, bloom. Looking forward to this one. Pretty, brand new for me. So this is Dodonia and I have definitely uh, planted this one before because it's beautiful it really it kind of changes color it's sort of pink with orange with yellow salmon um, it's 23 to 25 inches tall um, and it is a late bloomer um, it is so beautiful i love that this is one that i do plant year after year after year after year there there are a few of my favorites so this is another one dordogne so another new one for me is called Dream Touch. Um, this is a rich burgundy, but then it matures to like a sort of an antique mauve um, edged with a, a little white around the edging. Um, really pretty, 14 to 18 inches. Again, a late spring bloomer. And you might wonder why I have so many late springs. I, I'm in, well, now we're in zone six. We've always been in zone 5B. But we get some really cold winters, um, so I hate to lose things to, you know, late frosts. So this is Flaming Prince, and I have a whole bunch of the Prince series, Purple Prince, Candy Prince, Flaming Prince. Um, so this is a white flower with, like, soft purple uh, variegation in it, a great flower to add with, you know, some of the darker um, ones like the Black Hero and the Queen of Night look great in arrangements. 12 to 16 inches tall, and it blooms early to mid-spring. So this is a little bit earlier one. Fingers crossed that this one doesn't die from a late frost because we get a lot of late frost here. So hands down, this was my favorite last year of everything. French Blend Rose. This is from Color Blends. 23 to 25 inches tall. It's a late bloomer. Shades of pink, rose, and apricot. I absolutely loved this one. Absolutely loved it. Great for bouquets. Um, 
would buy it again and again and again. So uh, again, there are a couple of my top favorites, French Blend Rose, Dordogne, Menton. So I'm gonna keep going here. <laughs> Last year, I think I did one called Green Wave. This time I'm trying Green Star. It's a late bloomer, 14 to 18 inches tall. Um, and these look really nice. This would probably be really nice with mascari. Um, and they usually say that, um, you know, it's a very unusual color for tulips, this white with the green, but it would be really pretty with either, you know, like very white um, plants, foliage, or something that's really a dark green would be nice. But like I said, you can see in this picture, something purple behind it. I'm not sure what that is, but I could see this with Mascari, with Nepeta, uh, Camassias. Um, that would be really pretty too. So this, I think you, you pronounce this Gudishnik. Um, and this is a double, like a peony um, type of uh, blossom. And I think this should be interesting. It's very variable. Um, you can have ranges of yellow to orange to red, uh, vermilion, coral, with all within this one tulip. So this should be kind of interesting. Uh, mid to late spring, 16 to 20 inches. This actually reminds me of another one that I got a while ago called Morris Goodenough, which I really loved. That was beautiful. Um, same kind of thing, this peony type bloom. This is Ivory Floridale, so it opens uh, like to a cream, um, but then uh, gets whiter and whiter, uh, sometimes with even a pink streak in it. Um, it's 18, 19 to 24 inches tall, blooms mid-spring, and um, this is a, should be a nice relief against all of this color um, to have something um, that's a little bit that creamy white. Ivory Floridale, this looks pretty. This is a very pretty um, large cup tulip. I'm looking forward to seeing this. This is new for me. The one I'm most excited about is this, La Belle Epoque. Um, it's been very popular uh, with uh, floral designers. Um, it's kind of hard to get your hands on. It was sold out last year. A really pretty combination of antique rose, peach, butterscotch, cream. Um, it's a late tulip, 14 to 16 inches. It's a double. Um, so this one, I'm very excited. I'm sure I bought tons of them. I, I've lost count. And you know what the sad part is? Like every time you go back to a website, it's like, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. But you got to remember, you got to plant these things. So um, be careful and don't, don't go beyond what you can actually handle. Um, it takes a lot of work. This pretty lovely is called Mariette. It's a gorgeous heirloom tulip. It's actually been around since the 1940s with this really pretty rose pink flower. Um, mid to late, 16 to 20 inches tall. Uh, would look really pretty with like white triumphator, which I did plant last year. And I don't think I pulled those for some reason, so maybe those will come back up. Um, Marriott. This is another all-time favorite of mine, Menton, uh, from Color Blends. 25, uh, 23 to 25 inches tall. It's a late bloomer, pink with salmon. So you have that... Um, pink with a really pretty little orange highlight so it it can go nice with warm other warm color ones or just with the cooler color ones um really beautiful and a great cut tulip i've seen other people say this is also one of their favorites uh, i plant this one year after year after year this is menton a new white one for me. This is called Mundial. Um, it's an early to mid bloomer, eight to 12 inches. So put it in the front of the border. Um, it's a creamy white double with green highlights when it first opens, but it matures to um, a pure white with a yellow center um, and it's fragrant. So this could also be used in pots because it it's so small, early to mid spring. So here come the purples. Uh, this is Negrita, Triumph Negrita. Um, and this has been a top-selling tulip for more than 40 years. Um, it's very distinctive flower with that purple burgundy with the violet and lavender over, overtones. It looks beautiful planted with bright yellow and orange tulips. Um, but it can be a really pretty partner for the pastels like pe pink, peach, or cream. 
Um, I also, I couldn't get my hands on Negrita double, but I do have a parrot Negrita that I'm looking forward to. Um, so this one is a um, mid-spring, grows 18 inches tall, and this is Triumph Negrita. So as I said, um, Triumph Negrita has always been a very popular tulip, so now it's actually available as a parrot with that deep reddish purple with the uh, green brush marks on, on the petals. Um, opens a little earlier than the other parrot varieties, so 18 to 20 inches, mid to late spring. Next up is Paul Shearer, and this is so dark. It's one of the darkest around. Um, maybe even darker than Queen of Night. Would be gorgeous with white, yellow, or pink flowers. 16 to 18 inches tall and late spring. Paul Shearer. So Princess Irene is a triumph tulip, um, and it's got really beautiful orange petals that sort of are brushed with the purple coming up from the base. Um, this would look gorgeous with some dark purple flowers. Um, it's a mid-bloomer, mid-spring bloomer, uh, 12 to 14 inches tall. This one I have planted before. Again, very beautiful. Uh, mixes well with lots of different other tulips. Really pretty. Another of the, the Prince series, this is Purple Prince. Um, really pretty uh, rose pink petals, um, kind of scalloped around the edges. Um, 12 to 14 inches tall, and it's an early to mid-spring. And so this will, this will keep my purple collections going all spring long. One of the most popular tulips is Queen of Night. It's that really very deep maroon. Um, it's not actually black. Um, it's 22 to 24 inches high, um, and it blooms in the late spring. Uh, this would look really pretty with Everon, Menton, and Very Chic. I planted Very Chic last year. I'm not doing it again this year, though, but um, combines really well with other lighter colors. This is one I'm really looking forward to. This is Salmon Parrot. Um, the Salmon Pink Bloom, Watermelon Colored Blooms, um, creamy outer petals uh, streaked with that green, um, 16 to 22 inches tall. It's a mid-season bloomer. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to combine really well with some other beauties. This is Sane, and I've been looking for this one for a while. I think I first saw it from Klaus Dalby. 20 to 22 inches high, deep pink with a soft pink, uh, mid-season, really pretty two-tone pink, deep rose in the center of the petals, soft pink along the edges, will be beautiful in bouquets. This is Tom Pounce, and it says that it takes its name from a popular Dutch pastry. I don't know what that is, though. Um, it's a bright pink above a soft, creamy yellow uh, towards the base, uh, 20 to 22 inches tall, pretty bicolor here, um, mid-spring. I have planted this one before, but not for a while, so I'm, I'm trying it again. And I don't know why I keep saying Pounce. It's Poose, poos? something like that. <laughs> So two more, Yellow Madonna uh, has very large golden yellow flowers um, on the inside and a white to soft yellow with a green feathering on the outside, 14 to 18 inches tall, mid to late spring. And last but not least, because I live on Wyndham, um, this tulip is called Wyndham um, and it's a really beautiful, fully double flower with a muted plum petal with creamy edges 16 to 18 inches and blooms late spring and lastly the daffodils so this is bella estrella it's got a really pretty open center um, nice sweet scent sometimes it bears like two flowers per stem uh, 14 to 16 inches tall so it's white with yellow and it's an early to mid bloomer this one is a split corona daffodil called uh, cum laude. Um, nice, big, frilly, extra big flowers, um, long lasting, and it's been around for like 40 years. It is a mid season, 14 to 16 inches. This has a really pretty white outer petal with that peachy, um, very soft peach on the inner petals with the very center being that yellow lime green. This is a very popular um, daffodil called Delnashaw. It's white with that, those large uh, overlapping rounded petals, 
um, and they surround an apricot pink inner center. Um, it's got very strong stems, um, so it holds up those nice heavy heads. Um, 16 to 18 inches, mid to late spring. The next new one that I'm ordering is Sir Winston Churchill. This is lovely. I'm really looking forward to this. This is a little double. Um, each stem has two to six white flowers that are um, have the little flecks of orange in the middle. Uh, it's supposed to have a really nice, fresh, sweet scent. Great for cutting. All, all daffodils are deer and rodent proof. Um, Mid-season, 16 to 18 inches tall. And finally, last but not least, Thalia. Um, this, this one makes an excellent perennializer if that's something you're looking for. Thalia is almost 100 years old. Um, it's got white flowers with like two to three per stem, um, narrow petals, a very delicate little cup. Looks great with great grape hyacinths. Um, it's only 13 to 15 inches tall. It blooms mid-season. Um, again, a, the really pretty bright white color. Um, this has been a favorite and it grows all the way down to zone 8B. So this can grow in the deep south as well. So just to finish up here, this is Muscari. Um, grape hyacinth, which I just mentioned would look great with the Thalia. Um, I have it with Dordogne uh, tulips and Fritillaria and some hyacinths. Um, this is a really nice one. So I still have this. I didn't buy more of these. Another item that I still have is camassias. I have a lot of camassias. I probably have, oh, 50 to 75 camassias. Um, and they make a really beautiful late spring um, flower. And then I still have tons of alliums that are in the ground. Um, last year I got atropurium. <laughs> um, I had 30 of those. Um, I had allium ostara. Um, and I think there were a smaller amount of those. Um, and then also I planted a hundred, uh, drumstick alliums. So I still have those on all my globe masters. I have Mount Everest. So I have a lot of the ones that I already showed you. And lastly, I have Fritillaria. I love these, um, that really unusual bell-shaped flower. It's a great companion for tulips, daffodils, hyacinths, um, and other spring flowers flowering blooms. So um, I hope you uh, really uh, found this interesting. I think this one might be Persica. I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember. I can't find the, uh, the actual name. I'll have to find it. Um, again, thank you. This was sort of long and drawn out. I hope it gives you some uh, things to think about when you're ordering your, your uh, fall planted bulbs. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, like I said, I try to mix it up a little bit every year. I tend to use tulips as annuals. Uh, daffodils do come back, so obviously those I don't pull up, sorry. Um, I have fritillaria. I have things that I have left in the ground, but tulips I do usually pull. First of all, they don't like wet feet. Um, my gardens all have irrigation in them, um, so it's not like super dry and I don't have them in a specific spot. Um, they're all spread out in all my beds, which is the way I like it. So um, let me know which uh, ones are your favorites. I have a few that uh, I plant year after year. Um, and those are, you know, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta have your favorites. So um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like button. As always, it makes a difference. See you in the next video.